Jan Kurfürst, thank you very much. Oh, it's so nice to have the yeah, live music I could have, have here. that in my office <laughs> every time I finish the task. <laughs> when you commit something. Yeah, yeah when I commit something. Oh, <laughs> the positive music, that's right. nice. Awesome. So, our next talk. And I think it's the final talk for today. Is it? And then yeah. after this talk, it's, it's, it's the awards, right? So, uh, before... Before going in, I go into announcing this talk. Um, I want to reiterate: if there are nominees of the award out there watching this stream right now, which of course I hope you all are, um, and you haven't yet, get in touch with your colleagues if you want to group up for the award ceremony and film yourself when you actually do get the reward, and then share that video with us. That would be so cool. Um, right. Uh, the last talk for today is by one of our uh, core team members. And Gina Steiner is going to talk about resilience and reinvention, how to reach continued relevance. And I think with the pandemic that we've seen in the last year, um, resilience has become a much more important topic. And Gina really knows what she's talking about when I think about her background being a researcher and having gone, uh, you know, on meteorological, that's a very difficult word, um, you know, projects. Weather. <laughs> Just we weather. weather. That's good. <laughs> weather projects <laughs> <laughs> for the Max Planck Institute. Um, I th and I really enjoy her talks every time. So um, this time, resilience and reinvention from Gina Steiner. <laughs> My name is Gina Steiner, and today I will talk about uh, resilience and the invention and how to reach continued relevance. Resilience. Resilience is uh, the ability to cope with a crisis. So resilience is some kind of protection. Relevance. Mm, something is relevant to a task if it makes the task possible. So relevance is some kind of usefulness. On the one hand, you want to protect your system, make it resilient. And on the other hand, you want to have a useful system, one which is needed. Let's assume you offer a useful product. It's uh, useful to the market. And uh, let's assume your company is hit by a crisis. If you manage to go through the crisis, you might think, hey, great, I learned all my lessons. I can lay back. This will work. It will certainly work for a while, but since there is only one constant, which is change, change will come. So, in the end, the question is, how mature are you really? Did you manage because you had this one great financial officer? Or this awesome financial rescue package? Or this one CTO or whatever? What happens if this changes? Will you manage again? Will you cradle yourself in the self-fly and safety of the false summit plateau? Ah, self-fly is a heavy one. So on the one hand, this uh, subject area is about reflection. And uh, on the other hand, it is about path. So what do we ask ourselves? We ask ourselves the following questions. Who am I? Um, who do I want to be? How many do I want to be? 
where am I? And where do I want to go? And where do I move from here? And if I say I, I refer to the whole system, possibly company. In this talk, I assume you already know who you are, you, who you want to be, and um, how big you want to grow. In this talk, I would like to introduce you to the Kanban maturity model. I will focus on the last three questions. Because maturity seems to be a core concept for these questions. And um, there are a lot of different maturity models. So in this talk, I would like to introduce you to the Kanban maturity model. So coming back to the three questions, the KMM can help answering them. The KMM is a map or rough route planner. It is no timetable. It includes no time information. So nobody can tell you when you move from one level to the next level or how long it takes to move from level two to five. So really, there is no time information included. It highly depends on your system. For leaders, is it, a, it is a strategic approach. And for coaches, a collection of ideas around how not to overwhelm the system and how to avoid the false summit plateau. Where do I want to go is answered when you look at it as a map. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. Where I am is answered when you look at it as a map. And where do I want to go? And where do I move from here is answered when you look at it as a route planner. Since it avoids overwhelming, um, it will make your system resilient. And since you can always see that there is a way ahead of you, it avoids the self-lie of the, self, the false summit plateau. So um, if you check the KMM material on the KMM website, you will find a lot of posters. I will mainly focus on three of them to give you an overview. Um, I use the version 1.1. One one. First context should always be the version I call CEO version a really short executive summary. It briefly explains what the KMM is. So the KMM divides maturity into seven levels and it starts with zero. Each level has a speaking name. It assigns different forms of culture to these levels. Each culture has also a speaking name. It also assigns the scope of the system to these levels. This means if you are in a certain level of the system, you usually think in tasks or services. And uh, since I like catchphrases better than speaking names, I will add catchphrases to the levels. Level zero. This does not mean you do not do stand-ups or something similar. You might do that. It means that the responsibility of doing a certain kind of task is mainly bound to an individual. Level one. This level, in this level, you share responsibility. The individuals start to fade into the background and uh, delivering becomes more important. In this state, the team is very important. 
and they start to celebrate themselves and what they have achieved. Level two. In this level, the teams have recognized that they can't stay on their team islands. They observe that focusing only on their own team slows down the end-to-end -end flow. Since for delivering a finished product, product or service, a project, product or service to the customer, um, the interaction of teams is essential. So um, in this level, they increase the angle of view and start to focus on the customer. In this level, uh, you have managed to ensure the flow through the system and deliver the, exp the uh, expected project, product or service. The customer gets what he really wants. This level is an instable level because you talk about money. Either you can't invoice the real price since the customer wouldn't buy it, or you sell for a fake or political price. Maybe. You postpone the problem since you invoice continuously by hour until the bad awakening at the end of the project. So this level is unstable. Level four, in this level, you managed to deliver the wished product and the customer is satisfied with the price. In general, you have no discussions when the invoices are sent out and enough money in the bank account. Here, you could stop and feel good on a false summit plateau. The group is well aligned and you reach the good unity. And this system will surely last for some years. From a capitalistic point of view, if you want to sell, it's best to sell now. If you don't want to sell your company or you make sense, of what you are doing, sustainability becomes more important. In this level, you have developed uh, into a kind of market leader without being bound, bound to any individual or team. Not only you, but the people in the system make sense of what they are doing. You are known for certain projects, products, or services. And last but not least, level six. You reach this level when you've managed to decouple from certain projects, products, or services. This also means the system is resilient against crisis. You are able to keep relevance independently of certain products. But the key point is no matter who works there, the system always manages to reinvent itself automatically. Since the culture builds the base, and not any person. This is just a definition of levels. And if you try to locate yourself, um, <laughs> avoid self-lie and try not to elevate your company to any level. Um, remember, where am I? Where do I want to go? Where do I move from here? And if people show more interest in answering these questions, I present the next version. And if you use Kanban, it can help, but for the next version, it is not necessary to have implemented Kanban. So this is the next version. And this version assigns more properties to the levels. See, Kanban is only mentioned in the most left column, and you can ignore that if you like. In the middle, you can find the already known information, level name and scope. In the columns from left to right, uh, you can find the kind of leadership associated with that level, how trust changes from level to level, on which questions you mainly focus in this level. which values you can find in each level and how your actions change 
from level to the level, from reaction to anticipation, from chaotic to congruent, from tactical to strategical. And you also find what kind of behavior you observe in each level. On the very left, you can find the limitation and rewards of each level. So with this version, you should be able to locate yourself. If you have implemented Kanban boards in your teams and follow the six Kanban uh, principles and practices, uh, the KMM comes into full use. Now I show you a third and the last version of the KMM. Before we dig into this almost overwhelming version, like you see, I want to explain the difference regarding the lines um, compared with the other two versions. See, one line consists of two parts. And the lower one is the consolidation part. And the upper one is the transition part. Meaning, when you move from one level to the other, the moment you start to develop, the moment you start, you are already in the transition part of the next level. If you fully reach that level, you are in the consolidation part. So two lines for each level, not only one. You can also see a lot of columns. In the first three columns, um, we can find the things we already know from the other versions. Um, and the, the rest is new and Kanban. Nevertheless, I will explain to you how to work with it. But first, let me tell you how you can use this special KMM version for orientation, for example. Where are the individual teams located? And uh, where is the company located? You see, you might have different teams and the different teams might have a different maturity. Also, it, it's also um, not clear what the all over maturity of the whole company is. Um, you can use it for planning. Um, what is a reasonable, uh, what is an unreasonable next step for a single team? Or what is a reasonable and what is an unreasonable next step for the company? Um, here again, it, it's different for the teams, it's different for the company, but it is also different to think about the reasonable steps and the unreasonable steps. Something might be reasonable in a big view, um, but maybe it might be unreasonable to do this now. Maybe it is overwhelming the system now. Maybe it's more reasonable to do this step in a year or something like that. So when you do the planning, um, you do not think um, about where are the teams and the companies. So you think about what is a reasonable next step and what is the unreasonable next step for this different level? It is also very useful for reflection. You know, um, like with the reasonable and the unreasonable, um, you start to think about reasonable and unreasonable for each team and for your company. And uh, then you ask yourself the question, am I overwhelming the team or the company? And uh, is this harming? Of course, normally it is. Well, you also, when you develop what you recognize that you move very slow. So from time to time, you might have the feeling, oh, I do not develop at all. And I did not reach anything. So when you locate yourself um, in the maturity mo model, for example, in level two, you see, oh, I already managed to move from zero to one and from one to two. So I really achieved a lot. So this gives you the good feeling that you are on a good way. And um, also, it shows you um, 
yeah, I might have reached level two, but this or that is still missing. Maybe I have to put my finger into this wound. Maybe uh, the system can't do this by itself at the moment. Maybe the coaches can't do that. So you think about at which point can you offer some help and who should do that. Definitely, it's good for the coaches for illustration. But uh, like I said, this is um, 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 really incorporating a lot of information. So this might overwhelm the people. So they really need some explanation to this version. So now coming back um, to how to use this version. We start with the question, where am I? And um, we, for example, we roughly guess oh, we are somewhere around level one. And so um, first thing we do, we zoom into the first columns. So the question here is, where are you exactly? And what definitely helps is to check the cultural values. What cultural values do I observe? Maybe I recognize here, okay, it seems to be level one. Since collaboration, taking initiative and transparency, this works very well. Um, yeah, acts of leadership and maybe the flow, that's not really a working value at the moment. So level one it is. Now you should zoom into the Kanban visualization part of that area. So having reached level one means um, I should observe the methods mentioned in the consolidation part of the Kanban boards in my company. So I check the consolidation part and I have a look at the Kanban boards and um, I should see and observe that they use these things and these methods. If they don't, I'm the wrong level and then I have to pick another level. But let's assume I picked the right level and okay, I can observe that more or less in that team, for example. So when moving to the next level, you will start to observe methods from the transition part of the next level coming up. So, and if you now want to help the system without overwhelming it, you can pick one of the methods suggested here. So, for example, I pick visualize work items aging. So, and now you here see um, we are more digging deeper into Kanban, and so I will stop here. And um, if you want to know more about digging deeper into the Kanban part, um, you find more information in the KMM book or in the KMM website. So, what do I want? to tell you. You should know who you are and how big you want to grow up front. You should find out where you are. You can use the KMM for that. You should remember that level three is instable. If you want to sell, do it in level four. Avoid overwhelming the system. Do not jump to levels. This harms the trust and it uh, harms the system. And avoid the false summit plateau. Check often where you are located. Don't lie to yourself and recognize that there is a level ahead. 
Thank you very much um, for your attention. And I'm looking forward to your question. Wow, welcome back. That was Gina's talk about resilience and reinvention. I think I've never seen such a comprehensive <laughs> Kanban model. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want at least level seven in my <laughs> company. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, but I think you s first you have to do a workshop to really assess where you are at and which steps you need to take. Let's talk to Gina about it. I think yeah, she, she, she needs can to explain, explain that. it <laughs> much better than we can. Hi, Gina. Hey, Tobias. Tell me, where, where are you right now? In the maturity model or... <laughs> no, not not. I mean, not personally in the maturity model. More like um, we've had uh, conversations today with uh, Dimitri from from Russia, and then we had Jen from the opposite side of the world, uh, basically the other hemisphere. Where are you right now? Right now, I'm in Hamburg, and I think in about an hour I will be in Schleswig-Holstein in Rheinbeck. So ah, now beautiful. Hamburg in the middle. So this is basically your last act of work today, and then it's off to the weekend for you. Absolutely. Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, have a, this conversation with us after your talk. Thank you very much for uh, having having that talk at Neos Conference online this year. Um, you did a you did a really good job. Thank you very much. So what I was wondering <laughs> while I watched your talk is. Kanban for me, I've always equated that with, you know, an agile methodology, something that's, you know, lean, something that, that you know, very, very little framework for easy steps through a process. That you can write down on a napkin, right? I think that was <laughs> the idea, or at yeah. least that's how I remember it. Um, how does that yeah. compare to this? It's not a framework anymore, it's a methodology. What is it still At agile? first, I think you have... <laughs> Yeah, well, what is Agile? We can talk a lot about what is Agile and what not. Um, I think um, you have to distinguish between uh, Kanban itself and the maturity model. And uh, if you just uh, remember the last big poster, then you also this, the second one, then you had the Kanban practices um, on the one side. And these are 12. You have uh, six practices and um, another six. So it's about 12 things and it fits perfectly on a napkin. So, but the problem is if you just move forward and you develop yourself, then you start to think, ah, what could be a good idea to do next? And then you brainstorm and then some idea comes up and then you think, oh, well, uh, whatever. And uh, if you just work in systems and you recognize that people have some kind of ideas um, which are overwhelming the system, so they try to jump to the end. So um, this is like uh, when you, uh, whatever, you, um, you have a baby, <laughs> your baby is born and it's two uh, months old and uh, your idea is, okay, let's uh, bring that uh, baby to the university. <laughs> and that might be not a good idea at that moment. So all in all, it might be some, at some day a good idea or not. That's depending on how the baby uh, develops. It's in, yeah, step by step. It's an uh, agile decision from point to point. So it's an agile decision from point to point, but you should avoid bringing that baby um, <laughs> straight to the universe. <laughs> so in the your Kanban maturity model is about that. Okay. So in your experience, Gina, um, there are probably reset points where, although you want to reach the next level and you're on a journey, um, something happens in the in the team, in the company, in the market with the customer, and you have to reevaluate where you actually are because something has changed. What are such reset points where you think uh, you need to have a look again and assess which level you're really at? Um, it's um, it's a matter of trust. If you have a, um, a big trust in in your system, you can simply ask. And if you recognize that what you think, what the system is, and what the people tell you, what the system is then you have a, a divergence and then you need to reset. Uh, the problem is um, if you don't get to that information, really, if there is not enough trust in the system, then you just assume. And that definitely is a point where you need to reset. Okay. And 
w when you think about companies, and you've probably ha um, done this with customers um, in the past where you've talked about Kanban and the, and the maturity model, um, is there a certain size of, of company where you think that the, from that size onwards that makes sense to have a look at this model? Can the company be too small? Sort of. Because um, if you have only one team, then um, you can't put it really uh, up to a certain level because one team works uh, in, in that team level. And uh, with a team of six or seven people, um, communication is pretty, e pretty easy, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> it's easier than, than uh, with a group of 100 people. So, and if you just uh, see the levels, then there is one level where you just focus on the team and the next level, then the team starts to focus on the whole system. And um, I think you need at least two or three teams to work with the Kanban maturity model. And if you, yeah, let's say lo lots of agile frameworks say a team should be um, five to six people, but I think a team can scale up to 10 or 11 people. So. Let's assume, let's make it 10. I think from 30 people on, you can try to use the Kanban maturity model. It would make sense. Okay, cool. Um, do, do you think that can also be applied to other kinds of organizations? Um, what about nonprofits, for example, or, uh, or an open source project? Um, is that Definitely. completely different or does that apply as well? It definitely applies to all kinds of systems. And uh, this is why I think it fits perfectly into the NEOS community. Mm -hmm. Because, um, yeah, also we remember when we had that one sprint uh, in uh, Vienna and uh, we were located, uh, hosted in this big um, working and living project. I think um, yeah. it was 120 people or something like that. And uh, definitely you can also apply it to this. So all kinds of systems which you can find smaller domains or smaller groups, which in one or uh, an another um, situation have to group together uh, because one group can't solve the problem and then it uses two or three groups to solve that problem. It's, um, yeah, Kanban maturity model can be useful. The thing is that um, it is most useful when you use Kanban in the teams, then it fully comes into whole play. And this is um, for sure um, a bigger problem to implement Kanban in, for example, a work life um, project. Yeah. So watch out for the next Kanban workshop in your Schrebergarten community. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Definitely. <laughs> right. uh, do you think the, the, the Kanban model like you just uh, showed us um, does it interfere with other methodologies that you, you may be doing in your team as well? Like, for example, if you're doing Scrum as well, or should you only do one? Oh, definitely you can mix. Um, the third uh, poster um, um, uses Kanban just to locate yourself, but then skip that one. I think uh, development and um, the values are more or less uh, all the same in the in the agile yeah ideas so if you boil it down to the values definitely you can mix that up then you just um, find out what kind of value do we at the moment have in this team and at the moment do not have yet or we tell ourselves that we have that but we do not really yet <laughs> and then use that Okay. What's the highest level in your maturity level that, you, that you've ever seen in a team or a company? And was that, did that feel good? Did that feel right from your perspective? Well, I think I saw once level four. And um, I think there are companies who might have reached level five or level six, but it these are not a lot, and I think for a, a statistical, um, really, um, yeah, reliable, um, um, uh, yeah, sentence or, 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 or um, po point of view, really reliable. We do not have enough companies in level five and level six. So we do not really, um, we can can't really validate it yet. That's interesting about such a model, right? If, if you come up with a model and, and the next steps, and it's really hard to actually 
evaluate the, the higher levels and, and make sense of them because there are so few examples, if any, um, that you can you know validate that against. Um, really interesting. Definitely, with all models it's the same. With all models it's the same. And um, the more you test and the m more you implement it, the more um, um, systems you see in, in that level and the more you can validate that, definitely. It's empiric. Um, sure, like all sciences are, they start with an uh, empiric uh, point of view. And at the moment, there are not enough in five and six. Just makes me think of the talk we, we heard earlier, earlier about all the biases, <laughs> you know, when you evaluate and when you test. and That stuck to my mind. Um, yeah. Gina, it's something uh, for you, ab absolutely a recommendation also, to, to bec because I'm looking forward to our next uh, sprint in person again, doing retrospectives, and you know so much about all these, all these techniques. Um, this uh, talk was, was really interesting from, from Jennifer. I'm so looking forward to meeting you in person again in the near future. It's been so long since we last met. Um, yeah, definitely. And it's really cool to, to have you here at NEOS conference now and uh, have you deliver this talk about resilience and reinvention for us. Um, <sighs> it's, been, it's been too long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Gina, thank you very much for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, of course, watching NEOS conference tomorrow, of course. Right. We have another <laughs> streaming day tomorrow. Um, thank you yes very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you too. Have a nice day. Bye-bye, Gina. Bye. Bye.